In this tutorial, we're going to take a pre-made vector file and then look at various modeling tools to create a finished composite model. Okay, to get this tutorial started, we're going to go ahead and open up an existing file. And when you've downloaded and installed the tutorials for the Fleur de Lis, uh, you'll be given this file called Fleur de Lis underscore vector dot CRV 3D. So just go ahead and open that up. Now this is a pre-created set of vectors that we can use to demonstrate how to draw this fleur de lis. Um, if we take a look at our modeling tab, at the top of our modeling tab, we have all of the modeling tools that we have. And also we have underneath that our component tree. Now in order to create a lot of our shapes using the shape editor, we need to have actually closed vectors. Now there's other tools here that we can use to use a combination of open vectors to create shapes. And we'll go over that in a few seconds. Now in our component tree, we're gonna see that we have a level one already pre-created for us. Now the way that our component tree works is as we build up our composite model, which is what we see in our 3D view, we can add different components to our levels and they're added from the bottom to the top. And we're going to see that happen in a few seconds. So to make this a little bit easier to follow along, let's just go ahead and tile our views from side to side. So on our left side, we're going to have our 2D vectors. And on our right side, we have our actual 3D view. Now, when creating a 3D model from scratch, we should take a look at our modeling resolution. And this is how many pixels we're gonna to have to use to create our model. And the more pixels we have, the better quality the model is gonna be, but that also we need to take into consideration how fast our computer is. So if we go ahead here and take a look at our job dimensions, and we take a look at our modeling resolution, right now it's set to standard, and that's the fastest modeling resolution we have because there's less pixels to deal with. Right now there's 1 million pixels. If we drop that down and choose high, we actually have 2 million pixels. So it doubles the amount of pixels that we're going to share um, on our horizontal and vertical or down and across our actual modeling surface. And this should give us a pretty good model. So let's just go ahead and click OK. Now when we create a 3D model, we should take a second to think about how we're actually going to build it up. In this particular case, we're going to build a base. And then on top of that base, we're going to set our actual floor to lee. And so we're going to model it in that order. That way it makes a little bit more sense. Now, if you don't model in, the, in that order, that's okay, because you can go back later and slide around your components. But just for this demo, we're going to try and do it in the proper order. So let's go back to our modeling tab. Now, the first thing we need is a base to set our actual border on for our plaque that we're going to put our fleur de lis on. So to do that, we're going to select this outside vector. And again, it's a closed vector. So that way we can go ahead and use um, our create shape tools. Now, basically in our, our options that we have is we can create three different shape profiles. We can create a curve profile, an angular profile, or a flat profile. And in our case, we're gonna put a curved profile and we can change the amount of curve that we get just by using either the slider here. So if we slide this up and down, you'll see in our 3D view that we'll be given the actual result of the shape. In the 2D view, you'll see a temporary bit map that represents the shape that we have in the 3D view. And if we slide this up, we can go all the way up to 90 degrees. And if we slide this down, we can also make a negative shape, which is nice for making dishes and so on. In this case, I want it to be the angle to be about 20. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in and press space spacebar for the software to accept that. And you'll see that in our 3D view, we have a curved shape or a dome that's at a 20 degree profile. And that looks really nice. Now we're not going to add any kind of base height to it. We're not going to limit our height. There's no tilt. 
it is an add. We're going to add this to our modeling plane, which is perfect. And we're just going to rename this component base. And then click apply. And then close. The next component we're going to make is going to be our border. And to create our border, we're going to use a single rail extrude. And to do that, we need a vector to extrude a cross section along. So in this case, we're going to use this vector here. And we're going to use this cross section. So essentially what we're going to do is take this cross section and extrude it all the way around that vector to create a border. And to do that, we're going to use this create a shape by extruding along one or more center line vectors. So we're going to click that, select our border or our drive rail, and we're going to use that selection. And then we're going to use a vector cross section. So we're going to make sure we have this toggled on and then select our vector cross section. And as long as everything else is set the same way I have it here, then with the result that you get should be the same as I have. So we're not going to have any weave. We don't need to scale the exact height. And we're going to add this component to our base. And we're going to call this border. And if we click apply in the 3D view, you'll see what we get. And that's exactly what I expected. That's taking this cross section again and extruding it around this rail. And you get that lovely border shape. We can just click close. Now in our component tree, you'll see we now have two components. We have our border and our base. And both of these are being added to our level, starting off with the base first. And then on top of that, we're going to add our border. And when you hover over that, you'll see the combine mode is listed there under add. Now if I want to change that, I can right click on it and I can change my combine mode if I would like. But we're going to leave it at add right now because that's what we need. Now just to tidy things up, let's just go ahead and rename this level base. It's perfect. Now for our next part, we're going to start to work on our actual floor to To do that, just again to kind of keep things all organized in our head, it's best if we create a brand new level. So let's right click on top of base and we're going to insert in a new level and we're going to rename this level floor to press enter to accept that and we're going to turn off our base or hide our base level that way it'll be a bit easier it'll be a bit easier to see what we're actually creating now one thing i want to point out is that the level that i have selected is the level that my components will be created on in this case i can tell that the fleur de lis level has been selected because it's bold now, if by mistake I happen to click on the base and have it selected, it's been turned off or it's hidden. So the base text is red. That's just a bit of a warning for me. Now, if I have this selected and it is red and I create a component, that's okay. The component will just be created on the base level, but I won't see it. It might be a bit confusing, so it's always good to kind of keep an idea of what's going on over here. So let's go back and reselect our Florida Lee level. And let's just go ahead and minimize all the components in the base. Now, we didn't delete that. We just minimized those so they're kind of tucked out of the way. And still, our fluidity is bold, so we're working on that level. Let's take a close look at the vectors that we have here created for our fluidity. If we zoom in a little bit, you'll see that the side vectors actually overlap the center a little bit and that's done on purpose that way when we create the two shapes so the two components um, they'll actually overlap or merge into each other so that way it'll give us a nicer feel it'll look a little bit better and it will actually help when it comes to do our tooling uh, it'll just look much better in the end to start this off, I am going to zoom out a little bit and press F on my keyboard. That will actually fit or zoom to fit everything that's in my 2D view inside of my window here. And that way I can see it. Let's select our center shape and we're going to go back to our shape editor and create a single shape for that. And we're going to make it 60 degrees. That works fine. No base height. We're not going to limit it. It's going to be an a merge component this time so everything on this level 
is going to be merged. So our center with our sides, with our tie, they're all going to be merged together to give us a nice finished look. Let's click that to merge. Let's call this center. And if I click apply, then you'll see that I've got the center component created. That's exactly what I was hoping for. And that looks great. So let's close that down. And like I said, because this level was selected, that component that we just made called center was created on that level. And it's actually a merge component. The next piece of the puzzle is going to be this left side of our fleur de lis. Now this is actually made up of two different vectors. And we are going to extrude one cross section between these two vectors. And to do that, we're going to use our create a shape by sweeping between two rails. So we're going to click that. And we're going to select this outside shape first, holding down our shift key, we're going to select this inside vector. And we're going to say use selection. And then what we can do is we can choose one or multiple cross sections to extrude between those two lines. In this case, we're just going to use one. And it's going to be this one right here. So let's go and select that. Now, right now we have scale cross sections with width turned off. So what will happen is as this shape, this cross section gets extruded, extruded between these two lines, the, the, the height of this will not change. And we'll see that in a second. We're not going to scale our exact height. We're going to merge this in. And we're going to click apply for a second and take a look at this. So if we rotate this around, you'll see that this shape is a constant height all the way through. And that's really not what we want. It looks nice, but I think what we really want to do is vary that height as it goes through there. And we can do that by clicking on scale cross section with, with width. So where the space between the two drive rails gets wider, then this shape will actually get scaled up. So the height will be more. Where it gets thinner, then it'll actually be less. So let's just see what that gives us. And you'll see what happened, that actually it's taller here, and then it ends up getting lower as the two drive rails get closer together. And that gives us a very nice result that I really like. So let's change the name of this to be side. We can click apply one more time. So it accepts that name, let it close. And again, we're gonna see on our Fleur de Lis level, we have side and center, and these are being merged into each other. And they're actually crossing into each other here. So you can see how nicely that looks. Now, let's look straight down on this. Because this is a symmetrical thing, we can just go ahead and mirror our, our left side to our right side. So let's select the side. And we're going to go ahead and select our mirror selected objects. We're going to make sure that we have flip about center of job and create a mirrored copy. And then we can just flip this over our center line. And there we have it. And that looks great. We can close that down. And if we just click anywhere in this white space, we can off select that component. And we'll see that in our 3D view, everything looks really nice. Now, the last piece of this is going to be our tie in the middle. And again, we're going to use our two rail sweep, but we're going to use two different cross sections. So let's select that. We're going to choose our bottom vector first, holding down our shift key. We're going to select the top. We're going to use selection. And just so we can see what happens, we're going to start off with one cross section. In this case, it's going to be this guy. And we're going to place them at the end. And it's going to extrude this cross section all the way through these two vectors. And we can just hit apply to see what we have. And you'll see that this is the result. Now, a couple things are wrong. One is that this component is actually being added to our composite relief. That's why it's sort of pushing up through everything. If we change this to merge, you'll see that now it merges in nicely and everything looks all right. Now, to get the extra height that we need to get over top of all of these uh, other components, we're going to add in an extra cross section. So if we select this cross section, we can drop it in anywhere as we want to along these two 
lines, these two vector profiles. We're going to click that. And if we hit apply, if you look in the 3D view, you'll see what we have is this nice tie going on. Now what we don't want to do is we don't want to scale this particular cross-section with height. So we're going to unselect that, hit apply, and now we have the shape that I was hoping for, which you'll see that it actually raises in the middle, nice and tall. We get the extra little bit of detail with the little divot in it because we use this, this second cross-section, and that looks quite nice. So we're just going to rename this tie. We're going to click apply. We're going to close that have a closer look at what we've created. Now I have a little bit of a problem with the end of this because of the, the shape that we started out with and the gap between our two lines we end up with this bit of a hard edge. Now we can smooth that out simply and easily by using one of our sculpting tools. So if I select that component and then I select our sculpt options we can go in and we can smooth down those edges. Now, there's lots of other options here and lots of other things that we can do. But for right now, we're going to focus on just the smooth operation. And these settings are all OK. So we're just going to go into our 3D view. And if I hold down my left mouse button, then you'll see that I can smooth that down. If I hold down my Alt key, I can twiddle this around. And I can let go of my Alt key and I can smooth that end down. Look straight down on our relief or our composite model. We're going to keep all those and we're going to go OK. And now we have the finished fleur de lis. And I think that looks really, really quite nice. So let's turn back on our base level, zoom out in our 3D view. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with that, except for you'll see that this isn't quite centered inside of our base. So to do that, we're not going to do anything with our 2D view. We're going to do this all in our 3D view. So if we go ahead and maximize that, we can select the center component by double clicking on it. If I click it one more time, then I'll get my control handles up here and I can just stretch this down to be about there. I'm kind of looking at the top point the space between the top point and my border and now my bottom point and my border and that looks pretty good but now that i've gone and done that then my left and my right side and my tie don't actually fit in very well anymore so i hold down my shift key after i select one of these so i'm holding down my shift key now i can select the center tie i can select the right side and then letting go of my shift key i can click it once more and I can grab the center and holding down my Alt key while I drag down, it gets locked into my either my vertical or horizontal position. So I'm just going to slide that down to where I'm happy with it. Right about there looks pretty good. And there. Now that balances out much better. The spacing is much nicer. And if I off click everything and look straight down, then I'm very happy with what I see here. So just to be sure and to go over everything again, we have two different levels set up, one called base and one called fleur de lis. These two levels are being added to each other, but the components inside each level are acting differently. In our base, we have our base and our border being added together, but in our fleur de lis level, all of our components are being merged together to give us this nice smooth look. And that looks really nice in the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this off so we can come back to it a little bit later and maybe create some tooling for it.